All right, welcome everyone. Um, this is going to be a short and sharp presentation on club licensing and Saskatchewan soccer for the 2021 intake for the Canada Soccer Club Licensing Program. With me today is Marcus Rankins and Nicole Drozda, who are assisting and are the primary, I would say, support individuals that everyone has to tap into as they go through the club licensing program. So first off, we'd just like to acknowledge um, a few individuals. Oh, it says I'm not in presentation mode. Yes, I'm, I'm purposely yeah, not. It's just in uh, your, your regular view. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Um, so just, uh, we've had our first take intake in 2019 and our second intake from the 2020. And so in 2019, just as a bit of a recap, uh, we had a number of organizations that went through um, QSP and then a number of organizations that have gone through um, QSP, PTSO1 or PTSO2 over the past two years. So just want to acknowledge all the hard work that has been put into the club licensing program. Uh, in terms of what we're going to cover today, we have timelines for implementation, rewards and recognition, accessibility to competition, and then support through the club licensing program. So for timelines, what we are looking at for 2021 is um, we'll follow a similar process where there's a declaration of interest. So uh, organizations will visit the, the Saskatchewan Soccer Association website, go to the club licensing page under member organizations and click on the link that will take them to the declaration of interest. Uh, we will then send a communication to all organizations uh, once we have the application component ready to go, uh, there will be some minor modifications from last year, uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, organizations then can submit their documentation at any point in time. Uh, for this year, the deadline submission is going to be July 31st, 2021. Uh, one of the things to consider is not to leave it too late. You definitely want to get on top of it early. Um, so that there's not mass panic come late July and then, um, you know, trying to find ways to submit it and then feeling like you don't have enough time. If, if an organization has finished their application early, they can submit it early. So that's not a problem at all. Uh, the staff then review the application and two things may happen from there. The first one is we may come back as part of the scorecard and uh, request a series of additional information, or uh, we may highlight some criteria that were missed. Organizations will have, um, or they'll receive a communication by September 16th, 2021 with their scorecard and any action items. At that point, if we do ask for or request any changes, there'll be an opportunity to resubmit um, any of the requested changes by November 1st of 2021. If no changes were requested or you have done your resubmission, we then go to the recommendation stage. So organizations who have provided the required information for their application, um, depending on the strength of what was submitted and whether or not organizations have done what was required or asked from our end about missing criteria or, modific or modifying criteria, if they are successful, we then recommend to Canada Soccer and Canada Soccer then makes their announcement um, through their social media channels and on their website. Any organizations that are interested in the National Youth Club license um, go directly through Canada Soccer. Um, so you can find information on their website. I would highly recommend reviewing all of the documentation and timelines with respect to the National Youth Club license. Um, and then they will follow the process as outlined by Canada Soccer. In terms of rewards and recognition, um, all Canada Soccer club license holders will be recognized on the SSA website. Um, they will also be awarded additional MAP grant funding and member organizations pursuing um, certain levels of club licensing can also apply for additional MAP grant funding through the special project funding. All organizations will receive access to the ASC cloud platform. So all, um, all of the 13 organizations that were successful as QSP would have received access to ASC Cloud or um, Academy Sports Coach Cloud, which is the platform that is also used by Canada Soccer for all of their higher level coaching courses. Um, 
it also has access to additional resources within it that are created by um, some of the individuals that have worked within their organization, including Michael Beal, who is now the assistant manager at Rangers. Um, so the quality of content that's provided through the academy section as well is incredible. So for organizations that may not have the resources or the technical resources to have an individual developing session plans within their organization can definitely make use of the academy section, which has a series of activities and plans um, that they can tap into as well. And then lastly, uh, something that is fairly new is that there will be recognition on the Play Finder tool on the Canada Soccer website. So as part of the benefit of the Canada Soccer Club licensing program, Canada Soccer wants to highlight the organizations around the country um, that have the, the differing levels of club licensing or, of, or of the Canada Soccer Club license program. So for someone that is new to Canada and new to Saskatchewan and they pull up their website and they type in Saskatchewan, they would actually, you know, depending on their geography or locale, they would, um, if they lived in Saskatoon, for example, um, be brought to um, Saskatoon and then all of the organizations that have successful um, club licensing uh, standards or the designations um, would be showcased on their website. So accessibility, accessibility to competition is one of the four pillars behind the club licensing program, which were uh, reward, recognition, differentiation, and then accessibility to competition. Um, so we spoke a little bit earlier about rewards and recognition. Um, the differentiation is really um, more so, I'd say, suited to urban areas in larger geographies um, where there are a, a number of organizations that all deliver soccer within that um, within that geography and people that are looking for organizations that are trying to achieve the, the best standard that they can, um, you know, are able to promote the fact that they have achieved certain levels of the club licensing program. Another way of looking at it as well, though, is while we may be in a less populated province, um, we still have the designation and the media kit that goes with it um, to promote as a quality soccer provider or PTSO one or two um, versus other sports that also operate within the same geography as well. So um, there is a little bit of an opportunity to differentiate through the rewards and recognition um, compared to either other organizations if you're in a more urban area or um, across other sports that may also be competing for similar players. The last pillar is accessibility to competition. So uh, one of the things that we've worked to, and, and many of you will be familiar with this chart, is the competitions designations chart. So uh, through the different streams of participation, we have just done our best to outline where the different competitions reside within the different streams. Um, moving into 2022, so initially it was going to start for Outdoor of 21, but due to COVID last year, we extended it to Outdoor of 2022. The different streams are going to have... Um, club licensing designations attached to them. So for example, the competitive stream for youth will be a Canada Soccer PTSO1 or PTSO2 license. To access the development stream, which is primarily the player development program or the PDP, um, some of you may know it as OPDL or BCPSL in BC or Ontario, but specifically for a future Prairie PDP, um, you will need the Canada Soccer National Youth Club license. To participate in the community stream for youth, uh, no license is required. And at the grassroots uh, level, no license is required. However, there are criteria for um, programs that need to be offered depending on your level of club licensing. So what I mean by that is if you are a PTSO1, one of the criteria is that you run a Canada Soccer dedicated player program. If you are a PTSO2 or a Canada Soccer National Youth Club license, then you are required to operate a Canada Soccer Skill Center. The documentation for both the Skill Center and the Dedicated Player Program will be available in the coming weeks from Canada Soccer. Uh, but one clarification is that any organization that's a part of the club licensing program, whether you are a quality soccer provider, a PTSO1, a PTSO2, or a National Youth Club License, um, while PTSO2 and NYCL, you need to run a Skill Center, you can still opt in to run a skill center if you are a PTSO1 or a quality soccer provider. So you need to be a part of the Canada Soccer Club licensing program in order to run um, you know, a sanctioned Canada Soccer Skill Center. 
So for support for club licensing, um, there are a few different ways to look at it. So we've sort of denoted it as passive or active. So passive meaning Canada Soccer has a series of guides, the club governance, uh, club management and operation. Um, they also have the Canada Soccer Guide to Safety and then the Guide to Accessibility and Inclusion will actually be out very soon. In addition to the guides provided by Canada Soccer, we also have support guides for any organization interested in quality soccer provider, PTSO1 or PTSO2. And then in addition to that, on our SSA website, we have a series of club development resources and educational opportunities that we may have recorded, for example, on YouTube um, that tie into the varying criteria needed for um, quality soccer provider, PTSO1 or PTSO2. In terms of active support, uh, you know, Marcus oversees all of the technical criteria. Nicole is there to oversee um, any of the other criteria. So you are more than welcome to reach out to any staff at any point in time to engage them if you need help or support or just some ideas uh, regarding the different criteria and the best way in which to um, in which to try and work towards meeting that criteria. Uh, there's also the potential for community of practice. So something that we will hopefully be starting um, later on this year is actually having organizations that have achieved uh, different levels of club licensing, sharing one thing um, with the, the Saskatchewan soccer member organizations uh, from the club licensing program that they believe they do really well and having them provide some detail behind that so that others can learn from them. And then lastly, there is the opportunity to engage external experts, um, those that are familiar with the soccer system. So uh, we've had many of them uh, participate within um, Saskatchewan soccer, whether it be uh, someone like Paul Varian, who's done a lot of work within Saskatchewan. Uh, that's in, you know, utilizing someone like him to help with a strategic plan is an area that you can get SPF funding for. Um, someone else that's very familiar would be uh, Lara Schrader. Um, who actually did her master's thesis on the Canada Soccer Club licensing program. And so there is the opportunity to, to actually engage um, external experts to support the application process as well. And then in terms of just some of, of maybe providing a bit more depth behind some of the other resources, for example, uh, in 2020, we delivered a number of workshops and webinars that were recorded and are now available on the SSA YouTube page. Um, how to Write a Technical Plan by Paul Varian, How to Manage Your Technical Lead and Direction uh, was delivered by Paul Varian, Newcomer Engagement and Inclusivity Webinar uh, was delivered by Malvina Rapko, Developing a Walking Soccer Program uh, was delivered by Matt Greenwood, Marcus delivered uh, Developing an Annual Plan. Uh, we have recently released the Club Management Module, uh, which is a requirement for any organization at PTSO 1 or above for new board members and staff. Um, and then in addition to that, we had Dave Nutt present on two different webinars, the principles of club licensing program and balancing quality with accessibility and inclusion. So all of those different uh, webinars with the exception of the club management module can be found on the SSA YouTube page and tie in directly to some of the criteria that are needed uh, in relation to um, PTSO1 or PTSO2 applications or even uh, an NYCL application. So there's a series of, of guides, support, uh, both passive and active that can be offered for organizations to, to work towards achieving the best versions of themselves. And so before we, um, before we get into the process of applying, one of the, one of the things is that there is a, a, a reevaluation after two years. And so when, as an organization, if you're looking at, um, you know, your application or thinking about a higher level of an application, what we really want people to focus in on when building their application and their submission is two years from now, the question we'll ask over and over and over again is, show us how you are living these things. So policy isn't there to just sit on paper, policy is there to put into action. So um, it's a, I would say it's a really key area to emphasize because the best organizations are usually the ones that can take policy and bring it into real life um, and make it live um, and make it as a part of their operations and are very deliberate and diligent about that. So uh, that's you know a little bit of a 
you know, off in the distance in terms of the two-year evaluation, but I think it's really important to say um, as we get into the process of applying and submission. So um, the declaration of interest will open shortly. Uh, Saskatchewan Soccer oversees the quality soccer provider PTSO1 and PTSO2. Any organization interested in applying for a National Youth Cup license will do so to Canada Soccer. Um, however, one of the things that is important is that if you are planning on applying for an NYCL, um, you, we still recommend that you apply for one of the PTSO licenses with SSA in case your process of uh, acquiring an NYCL license is elongated or just not approved. So if you the, the work that's done for a National Youth Club license application would hit all of the criteria needed for a PTSO-1 and PTSO-2. The application process uh, will be communicated in April, so we're waiting to just finalize that a bit. Um, there is the potential that we have an online portal that we will be able to do, uh, do the applications through rather than um, through OneDrive, which is what we did in 2020, um, after our lessons of using Formstack in 2019, which actually made it a little bit difficult for everyone involved. So uh, we hope that this online portal will be able to provide more information before the end of this month. The application submission is July 31st, 2021 for QSP, PTSO1 and PTSO2. And NYCL applicants should refer to Canada Soccer for information specifically on their timelines for National Youth Club license. So with that, we'll turn it over to questions that anyone may have. Um, I just have a, a question regarding the, um, I guess the TD, um, like education for, for PTSO one and two. Yeah. Um, is there gonna be a Saskatchewan specific course for, for those? I think that was in the works, correct? So the PTSO TD diploma is actually a Canada soccer initiative. Mm -hmm. um, so it's something that is being worked on. Um, I'm actually a part of the working group that's helping to build the, the TD diploma. Canada soccer looked at it and said, there's no point in every province having their own education regarding like uh, regarding educating technical directors. So some consistency across the country uh, would be very positive. So it's, mm -hmm when we have timelines allocated within the club licensing program, and I believe for that one specifically, it said, you know, brackets in 2021. Right. That was with the intent that it would be completed in 2020 and we would have at least one course. So anytime that there's a timeline, it's always within reason. So if it's 2021 and let's say it gets done and it's released in December of 2021, well, we would most likely look to run a course in 2022 so we would sure. want all the organizations that are at a PTSO one or PTSO two to have their TDs involved in that course. Um, and we would look to host one in Saskatchewan just so that we're able to, um, to able to meet the demand that there will be. So uh, I think we were one of the smaller provinces to actually host a children's license in 2019. And that yeah. was partly in due to the fact that we want to make sure that Saskatchewan coaches and technical leaders had the opportunity um, to get that education because we knew that it was important for uh, things like the Canada Soccer Club licensing program, for operating a skills center, um, and we'll do the same with the PTSO T to diploma. So the timelines will be reasonable, um, or we always do our best to make them reasonable. And the moment it is available, we will let everybody know, probably multiple times. <laughs> for sure um and and you had touched on it just the accessibility and inclusion guide is that supposed to be released this year too it's don't hold me to this but it should be released very soon okay. um so we were really excited to find out that it's supposed to be released very soon so like i said uh don't hold me to it but um i'm very optimistic rather than cautiously optimistic okay no, that's awesome. I appreciate it. And and one more question. Sorry, everyone. Yeah, go for um, it. In, you had mentioned, like, let's say if an organization is applying for National Youth Club license, would they also submit like a PTSO one or two application to SSA as well in case there was some holdups like you had mentioned? Yes. Um, so the two applications would be separate. So you would apply to Canada Soccer for a National Youth Club license, but you would also apply to through SSA for the PTSO one and or two. 
the yeah. nice thing about it is that it's a scaffolded approach. So you're all yeah. like, if someone's applying for a national youth club license, they would effectively be putting together an application for PTSO one or two um, at the same time. The Canada soccer timelines work differently than the Saskatchewan timelines. So right. um, the National Youth Club license process can take for some people six months, for others it's taken over two years and they still haven't crossed the finish line yet. And that's a part of the, the journey that, um, you know, Dave has spoken about on a number of occasions is this program is there to help organizations become the best versions of themselves. And that is, a, you know, where they want to go is determined by, you know, sort of their goals and, you know, like their goals, values, principles, ambitions as an organization. Um, so for some organizations, it's just taken longer because there was more stuff to work on. Um, they hadn't necessarily done a lot of the foundational work and realized, oh, wow, we have a lot of gaps because for, I mean, since the club licensing program, there has never really been a focus in on member organization development um, or club development. Um, and so we've spent a lot, a lot of time in the last like 20 years really focusing on things like player, player pathway, coach, coach pathway, education, referee, referee pathway and education. And we're now able to make that transition to really focus in on the, uh, the organizational development aspect of soccer delivery in Canada. Um, so it is, it's definitely a part of that journey and that transition. Um, but the criteria is available on the Canada soccer website for a national youth club license, as is the guides for support. So, um, I think you'll see the, the substantial amount of overlap between those two things. For sure. And I mean, it's nice too, that like, I think Saskatchewan is one of the only provinces to put out their PTSO criteria. Um, so it's kind of not like a shot in the dark and it is very um, stepwise. So it's, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Fortunately, Dave built it all. So it always makes <laughs> sense when Dave does something. Um, so, you know, uh, he's he's an incredible builder of systems and so this has been a very simplistic one to put into place in terms of that um qsp to ptso one to two to nycl um and we are fortunate i think outside of i think ourselves and one other province are the only ones that have club licensing like fully from qsp to ptso one and two um and that's you know credit to to staff so it's credit to nicole and marcus for all the work that they do. Um, the club licensing program came on the scene and they have really run with it and made sure that organizations do have the ability to um, work towards their best version of themselves and provide the feedback that helps them to get there. Great. No, thank you. No worries. Um, yeah. If you have another question, you can go for it. No, that's it for me. I was, I was trying to think. Uh, but that's it for me for now. Perfect. Um, any other questions? All right. So one of the things, and I'll reiterate what I said earlier, um, the biggest thing when going through the club licensing process is constantly asking yourself the question, um, if you're doing the application or the organization asking themselves the question, uh, show us how we are living this. So. Uh, an example could be uh, from a coaching perspective. So if one of the criteria is like, how do you help coaches be more culturally sensitive? Well, how do you live that? You know, what could we look for to see that an organization is living that? So it could be, do we even know what the demographic makeup of our community is? And let's say it is heavily um, European or Eastern European. So there's a large group of immigrants that have come from uh, you know, a certain part of Europe, do we understand a little bit about their culture? Do we consider their culture when planning events? Um, and then do we educate our coaches on things that may be culturally appropriate to educate them on? So that is an example of providing coaches with a little bit of a toolkit to better support their athletes because they have a better understanding of the culture that they're going to be, or the cultures within the groups that they're going to be coaching or interacting. Um, and that's, that that would be a very simple, straightforward example of like, show us a coach education presentation that you provide on a yearly basis to your coaches. And that goes beyond the, yes, 
we teach our coaches to be culturally sensitive or our coaches are culturally sensitive to this is how we've lived it. We've put it into practice. Um, so it's that transition between um, having something on paper versus actually doing it. Um, Marcus and Nicole, just to bring you in, uh, Marcus, from, from all of the reviews that you've done on the technical side, is there any tips or tricks that you can uh, provide to either those on the call or those that may be listening to this later on? Uh, you know, I think the big thing really is uh, a lot of this, it, like Raheem had mentioned and Dave is really good about saying that this is really a pro, we're here to help you get the license at the end of the day. You know, it, it sometimes feels like, oh, we're just checking boxes or marking or scoring, but we really want to help you get there. And a lot of what's in place already is is designed to make sure that you've got some of the policies, protocols, you know, details uh, that should be there, you know, and some of the things that maybe you might not even know, you know, so um, like for Hassan, who's just joining into a TV role, you know, there's a ton of things probably jumping into your head on, holy smokes, where do I start? What do I do? And some of this club licensing helps to clarify that role and responsibilities, what needs to be done and what some of the priorities should be. So, uh, you know, don't shy away from it. Ask questions if you have any. And uh, again, we're here to try and give you the answers and, and help support you to get to that license that you're looking for. So, Nicole? Yeah, same as what Marcus said. If you need help, ask. Uh, utilize the member resources page. There is uh, a lot there um, to help you through the process. And if you have any questions with anything, just don't hesitate to reach out. Wonderful. So I'll one more opportunity for any questions from anyone. Otherwise, we will say goodbye. All right, doesn't sound like there are any questions. So thank you very much for joining us, Danielle, Daniel, and Hassan. Um, and to any of those that are listening after we have completed this recording, um, to reiterate what Marcus and Nicole said, we're here to help, reach out. We'll always be willing to have those conversations with you and good luck on your club licensing journey. Take care, everyone. Thanks.